Hey guys, Renner and Shades here. Exercise my first time rice vlog style, and yeah, I'm wearing flannel now. I kind of like it, actually. And it's pretty ironic I'm wearing flannel, given that I'm going to be talking about a glam metal band today, which is like the polar opposite of flannel. I understand some folks might find this music news story kind of petty, but I've been seeing a lot of articles about it in my feed from both Blabbermouth and Sleaze Rocks thus pushing me to want to talk about how stupid the whole thing is. And as a self-proclaimed glam nerd, I feel a bit of an obligation here. And looking at the title of this video, this centers around a glam metal band I've enjoyed and appreciated for many years, Rat. For the two of you out there that have never heard of Rat before, they're a glam metal band that were among the better known in the LA scene throughout the mid to late 80s and into the early 90s. Most people know them for their hit song Round and Round, but they have plenty of other awesome songs such as my favorite Back For More, Wanted Man, and Lack Of Communication. And that's from the first album alone. Rat have shit tons of great songs from their first five albums. They were a great band with a great sound. It should go without saying that I love them. But enough about that. Let's talk about what's going on now. Throughout the 2000s, Rat have gone through a number of lineup changes with the singer Stephen Piercy constantly leaving and coming back, the AIDS-related death of Robin Crosby, one of their original guitarists, and other such changes. Rat are pretty much one of those classic bands that can't keep a consistent lineup. Stephen Piercy last left the band in April 2014, and we'll talk more about that later. But because of that, Warren Demartini, the other guitarist, has been reluctant to do any touring without Steven. So Juan Krauser, the bassist, decided to put together a band surrounding him called Rats Juan Krauser, the other voice of Rat, since he did co-write a lot of the songs in Rat's classic catalog. Roughly 50% to be exact. <laughs> And basically, he's touring with this band, performing all the Rat classics, and even using Rat's logo. This upset Rat's drummer, Bobby Blotzer, since he, along with Warren and Steven, have the legal rights to the Rat name and whatnot. Then Blotzer proceeded to completely blast Juan's characters, saying he knew he was trouble when he walked in. What am I doing with my life? I can somewhat agree with where Blotzer is coming from, since I don't like it when musicians tour as a different version of a band. I made a video about this concept back in 2013 when I focused a lot on the Queensryche situation that was going on back then, that I'll link in the description. But what I find hilarious about this is that Blotzer is getting mad at Juan for doing the same thing he's doing. What's he doing? Bobby Blotzer also has his own version of Rat called Bobby Blotzer's Rat Experience. Not only do I find it hilarious how hypocritical it is for Blotzer to do the same thing he's bashing Juan for doing, but how delusional he seems to be that what he's doing is even a good idea. His main defense is that since he legally owns the Rat copyright, he has the right to tour. So do Warren and Steven, but Warren doesn't want to tour without Steven, so Blotzer is pretty much on his own. The other defense he has is that he feels he owes it to the fans since they missed out on putting together a 30-year anniversary tour for Out of the Cellar, which I can understand since that album is classic. Legally speaking, he does have the right to tour, but like I said, that doesn't mean this is a good idea. Why isn't it a good idea for Blotzer to tour with his rat experience? He's been hyping it like crazy from what I've read in these articles. Invasion of Your Privacy turned 30 years old last June, and we're coming up on the 30-year anniversary of Rat's third album, Dancing Undercover, next year. The problem is... Nobody is going to give a shit about a rat without Steven Piercy, without Warren Demartini, or even without Juan Krauser. I know I wouldn't give a shit. I'm not going to go out to a concert just for Blotzer, no matter how fond I am of his drumming style on the records, and I doubt many other people will either. That's why I think this is going to fail so hard. This is going to fail because of Blotzer being a delusional idiot who just wants an excuse to tour. You want to tour for the 30th anniversary of Dancing Undercover? Patch things up with the rest of the band like fucking adults. Stop acting like overgrown babies. It's really embarrassing to people like me on the outside of things. I mean, I'm not going to stop listening to Rat just because of this. I'm not that irrational. But this needs to stop. So what does Warren do? He's suing Blotzer for passing off a tribute band as Rat. 
that's essentially what this rat experience is, as well as the other voice of rat project that Juan has. They're both tribute acts that are not going to get anyone interested in coming out unless they're serious diehard fans of rat. Warren also had a problem with the name, which I can get since rat experience is somewhat unoriginal. One idea he had for a name he could have used was Bob Seller. I actually think that's pretty cool. It's clever, and it references Out of the Cellar, which again, classic fucking record. I might disagree with the concept of Warren having to sue Blotzer over this, since again, this could be dealt with like adults, but if this is what it's going to take to stop Blotzer from making an ass of himself and failing any harder, then I say go Warren. Again, legally speaking, Blotzer does have the right to tour and perform all the rat classics, but that doesn't mean it's going to catch on with their audience and get the folks excited. Same thing applies to Juan Krauser's project. Now what about Steven Piercy? He hasn't been mentioned in this video for a good bit. We said earlier that Warren doesn't want to tour without him, so why did Steven leave Rat? Well, according to the blog post on Eddie Trunk's site around the time he left, he said, I'm officially done with having anything to do with them due to the constant turmoil, unresolved business, personal attacks slash threats in the public forum, and most of all, the disrespect to the fans. At this point, I can't say I blame Steven at all for wanting nothing to do with Rat in this state. Why would he still want to be involved with a band with this level of infighting? And it is indeed very disrespectful to the fans. Why do you think I sound so agitated in this video? I don't like seeing such a classic band I've admired since about 2008 get shat all over by its own members. I felt the same way about Queensryche back when I made that dual lineup video, and I feel the same way about LA Guns, Great White, and Faster Pussycat as well. And now Rat is going down that path. Wonderful. In all seriousness, I do hope shit gets resolved and Rat can go back to being Rat. If shit can't be dealt with in time for the 30th anniversary of Dancing Undercover, there's always the 30 year anniversary of Reach for the Sky in 2018, which is also a good album. Other than that, that's all I have to say about this. Thank you for watching this video, take care, and have a nice day. I'm Shades, and I'll see you next time. Also, I want to show you guys something that I got for my birthday this week. You're going to love this. Huh. Yes, GOA is finally on a shirt. And that's not all. On the back, um, it has our discography right here. Enter the Gardens on the left, October 2013, and Red, Yellow, and Blue, April 2015. Fuck yeah.